What do you call a headless guitar body? I don't know, headless guitar body. Hello and welcome to the Highline Guitars YouTube guitar building channel. If you're new to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider subscribing. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering part seven of my Delta guitar build, and that's the build where I am combining the features that I like from a headless guitar with the features that I like from a more traditional guitar that has a headstock. And what I'll be doing specifically is I'm going to be making the body on my CNC machine. So let's head out to the shop and get started. The first thing I have to do is position the blank in the center of the waste board. And the reason for that is because the CNC machine doesn't know where the blank is located in the workspace. So I have to place it into what will become a known position. And to do that, I have lines on the edges of the blank at the exact center. And those lines are positioned to line up with lines that are engraved into the waste board. And those engraved lines represent the X and Y center position on the waste board. So by positioning the blank relative to those lines, I can place the blank in what will become a known position. Now once the blank has been clamped down, I have to home the machine in order to tell the controller where the spindle is located. So the homing operation is going to move the spindle to the lower left corner of the CNC machine. And once it reaches that position, limit switches built into the machine will be activated and they'll send a signal to the controller which tells the controller exactly where the spindle is located. From there, I can numerically jog the spindle over and back to what will become the XY start position of the blank itself. At this stage, the controller knows exactly where the spindle is located relative to the blank. However, it doesn't know the z-axis position, and to do that, I'm going to use a probe to tell the machine exactly where the tip of the bit is located. After the neck mounting holes have been drilled, the machine is going to return to the XYZ start position in the lower left corner of the blank. From there, I can switch the bit out to a quarter inch diameter, two flute spiral down cut bit. And I'm gonna use that to carve the recesses for the neck mounting uh, bolt ferrules, as well as the perimeter of the control cavity recess. And the reason I'm using a down cut bit is because it will cut a nice smooth edge without any tear out or fuzzies. However, it doesn't do a great job of removing material as it carves the full depth. So once that initial uh, up or down cutting operation is complete, I'll swap out the bit for a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit to carve out the rest of the depth more efficiently. The next carving operation on the back of the guitar body is going to be for the comfort contours as well as the beveled perimeter. And to do that, I'm gonna use a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral upcut ball nose bit. And this carving operation will actually involve two separate passes. The first is a roughing pass, and that will leave a terraced stair step texture on the wood. And then the second pass will be a finishing pass, which will remove that terrace and leave a nice smooth surface that I can sand with 220 grit sandpaper later on prior to applying the finish that I intend to use on this guitar body.
If you're enjoying this video, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. That always helps this channel to grow. If you'd like to do a little bit more and help support the channel financially, you can click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you want. Also, you can visit my merch shelf, which is displayed below the description, and purchase a t-shirt, plans for building a guitar, or plans for building the tools that we use to build guitars. Now back to the video. The carving operations on the back of the guitar body are now complete, so what I can do is remove the clamps and flip the blank over. So what I have to do is I have to register the center marks on the edges of the blank with those engraved lines on my CNC machine. That places the blank exactly where it needs to be to register my two-sided carving. The first carving operation I need to do on the front of the guitar body is going to involve drilling the holes for mounting the individual bridges. And to do that I'll be using a sixteenth of an inch diameter drill bit. The next carving operation is going to involve cutting the start for the pockets on the front of the guitar body and that of course includes the neck pocket, the pickup pockets, pockets for the individual bridges, and then a rear pocket which allows for easy access to the bridge tuners. And to do that I'm using a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral down cut bit and that's so the edges of those pockets will be nice and clean without tear out or fuzzies. And then once that operation is complete, I'll swap out the down cut bit for a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. And that will remove the remaining material more efficiently from those pockets. Just like I did on the back of the guitar, I'm going to carve some comfort contours as well as a beveled perimeter. And to do that I'll be carrying out two separate carving operations using the same quarter inch diameter two flute spiral upcut ball nose bit. The first operation will be the rough cut and that's going to leave that terraced stair step texture and then the second pass is going to be a finishing cut which will remove the, that terraced uh, texture and leave a surface that's smooth enough to sand with 220 grit sandpaper before I apply the finish that I plan to use on this guitar body. Now because a ball nose bit leaves a flare out where it cuts through the body, I need to do a perimeter pass using a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral upcut flat tipped end mill to remove that flare out as well as to smooth out the uh, edge of the perimeter all the way around the body. And if you look closely you'll notice that the body is held in place with tabs and that's to keep the body from flying around once that bit has cut all the way through the surface. Now, I've had people ask me why I don't use double sided sticky tape and just get rid of the tabs. Well I could but I have found that 
using double-sided sticky tape or the uh, masking tape CA glue trick doesn't really work when you're cutting aggressively. There's too much of a potential for that tape to fail. So I prefer just using tabs. It, it's, it's simple to use, they're easy to cut, and it's guaranteed to remain in place. With all of the CNC cutting operations now complete, I can remove the clamps and cut the tabs to liberate the body from the blank. After doing a little bit of cleanup, I decided to go ahead and temporarily press the neck into the body to see how this design is going to look. And as so often is the case with prototype builds, there was one design feature that I decided I had to change. If you look closely, that neck heel looks a little too big. So what I decided to do was to move the forward neck mounting screw locations back roughly about an inch and that would allow me to cut off uh, about a half to three quarters of an inch of the front of that pocket on the body. And that makes it much smaller and less intrusive but it also meant I had to reshape the heel on the neck itself so that kind of put me behind schedule a little bit no big deal but it was something I felt I had to do to make this guitar look and feel just right As you can see, the end result of that little bit of extra work paid off. The neck heel is much smaller, it's more compact, and it feels so much better as you would play the guitar. So I'm glad I did it. A minute ago I mentioned that I was pretty much done with the CNC work on the guitar body, and that's basically true. However, there is one other part that I need to make, and that is the control cavity cover. To do that, I used a slab of quarter inch thick flamed maple. And what I wanted to do was engrave my Highline Guitars logo into the surface of that cavity cover. To do that I used a two cut strategy. The first cut is carried out with a sixteenth of an inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit and that removes most of the wood that forms the logo. Then to uh, finalize the details I swapped out that sixteenth inch bit with a one thirty second of an inch uh, two flute spiral up cut bit and use that to carve out the very fine details. When that was finished I went back to the sixteenth of an inch uh, two flute spiral up cut bit and use that to cut the perimeter shape of the cavity as well as to drill the holes that will mount the cavity into the body. When that was done I was pretty much finished with the control cavity cover and all the CNC work. So what I had to do now was to remove the blank and then cut the tabs to liberate the cavity from the blank. From there I filled that logo cavity with walnut sanding dust and then flooded it with thin CA glue. I gave that about two to three hours to fully dry and then I sanded the entire surface with a progression of sanding grit starting with 80 grit and then working my way up to 400 grit. Once that was done I was able to apply my polymerized tongue oil finish. All right, guys, well, that's all the time I have for this episode. In part eight, I'm going to cover applying the finish to the body. And just like the neck, I'm going to be using a botanical polymerized tongue oil from Sutherland Wells. So be sure to check that out. And in the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.